Um, so good morning or good evening, everyone. Whether you're on a Zoom on Tencent or at CGC Beijing in person for this event. First, I'd like to welcome you all and thank everyone for attending. I'm Shi Fan from Urban China Network at Columbia GSAT. Let me briefly introduce Urban China Network and Urban China Forum this year. We are a student organization operated by urban planning students aiming to create a communication platform for Chinese urbanism across multiple disciplines. This is the seventh year of Urban China Forum, and I would like to thank our sponsors, GSAB, Columbia Global Center Beijing, and the Weatherhead East Asian Institute for making this forum possible. During this challenging year, we're proud to be able to host a two-day U.S.-China forum here at this virtual meeting room with all of you. This year, our theme revolves around cities' response to COVID-19, as Chinese cities have been in the center of the discussion. We hope to discover multiple aspects of urbanism in the pandemic, to reflect on the past, review the present, and reimagine a post-COVID future. Many of you may have attended yesterday's um, forum with the topic of management and pandemic urbanism with uh, Mr. Rui Qian, Professor Qing Mingzhan, and Professor Ying Long. Today, we'll continue the forum with two other topics. We are honored to be joined by leading practitioners and scholars today. Topic technology and smart planning will be joined by Professor Zhi Qiang Wu from Tongji University and Mr. Ya Ming Xu from World Economic Forum China. The topic of resilient and healthy city will be discussed by Mr. Dai Zong Liu from World Resource Institute China and Professor Lang Wang from Tongji University. The schedule has been posted in the chat box for your reference and there will be Q&A sessions following each presentation. Also, please be reminded that the forum will be recorded. Now, I would like to invite UCN's advisor, Professor Wei Pingwu, Program Director of Masters in Urban Planning at GSAP, to give us a short opening remark for today. Thank you, Xifan. Uh, thank you to all of the students. I am very, very proud of you. And I also want to thank all of you to dial in, either in Beijing or in Shanghai or from anywhere. So welcome to GSAP, to Columbia, and to Urban Planning at Columbia. Um, I wish we could be in person, but if there is any silver lining of this pandemic, is that we can actually talk across continents. And so yesterday's um, presentations and discussions were very um, helpful, and I hope we'll continue that today. And uh, pandemic has affected all of us across different continents. On this side of the Pacific, it really has been crisis after crisis after crisis. And it's difficult to think that may be a new normal or promise. And in light of that, I think what China has done brings us to bear that perhaps the gaps and the gulf between global south and global north are no longer there. And we perhaps are seeing promises from the other side of Pacific, especially I think uh, along three dimensions. And that is one, climate change, right? Just as we were making progress towards climate change adaptation and the mitigation, a pandemic hit. So how can we continue to overcome the crisis of pandemic, as well as continue to strive towards climate change adaptation uh, when everybody is trying to um, you know, uh, remain healthy. And second, particularly on this side of the Pacific, pandemic has shown that where you live, who you are in the cities really matter. Social spatial segregation has shown its ugly face um, 
more than ever during the pandemics. And we know particularly in New York City where Columbia is, um, the poor and the black and the Latinx communities are being affected the most. And last but not least is we also are seeing on the side of the Pacific that public investment or lack of has really affected and how uh, cities and those who live in the cities, all of us can um, cope with uh, the pandemic and especially with the rising of various different technologies. And so we really very much hope through this um, interchange today that we get to know how Chinese cities and Chinese um, residents and scholars and practitioners are engaged with these challenges. And I really want to thank all of the speakers for coming in. It's a Sunday morning and it's also right after you know, the October 1st holiday week. And so uh, thank you for being so generous with your time. And I look forward very much to your uh, presentation and wisdom. Thank you, Wei Ping, for your remark. I think we can start now. So Professor Wu, Zhichang Wu, already can't wait to start Great as all. So now let's welcome him to give us a presentation on smart planning. OK, good. Uh, thank you for the invitation and the very uh, delight that the you, the GSUP uh, organization, the students together for this uh, special topic in this year. And uh, I just uh, uh, not talk about the general uh, knowledge about the smart planning, smart city. Uh, it's uh, concentrated on the very special topic for the special and uh, uh, the epidemic efforts in the Chinese city. And uh, so it's uh, really very important in this year, we, uh, in this uh, seventh uh, Urban China Forum, especially concentrated on this topic. Uh, I will uh, divide my, my presentation in the following three points. One is the, the relationship between the uh, space and time and the resource is so important. And the second, I will come to the urban planning, what we can do in this uh, epidemic uh, prevention. And the third one, I would like uh, the finally to talk about the, what's the, can we uh, provide the support for the urban governance? Sorry, Professor, uh, you want to share yeah. your screen with us? Uh, you don't have my... No, we don't have the screen sharing yet. Okay, okay, good. Do you now have it? Yeah, we can see that now. Thank you. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you. Excuse, that's my PowerPoint. Uh, so, that's one. And uh, that's the, the three points, what I mentioned just and then first we come to the relationship between space, time, and the resource, the three relationship between it. It's very important actually the response to the urban impact uh, is the very important, uh, the crucial driver force. It's very important for the city being. And uh, actually, uh, I would like to say, as a city, as a being, as a life, is always exposed to the continuous impact which force it to respond, to uh, react, to learn, and to update. As that's the, actually the, always the history of the growth of the cities, the history, in the history, and uh, still today. And uh, so we should, as the urban planner, learn a lot from this process. So it's so important for the, for the <clears throat> through this uh, uh, epidemic uh, prevention and uh, also we can 
uh, for the future city is very important. So actually, uh, this uh, impact and uh, countermeasures in the course of the urban development uh, still actually in the long term, in especially in the in the after the industrialization in the city, especially here I show the spread of the corona in uh, 19, in 1832 in London, and uh, but afterwards it's very important uh, we can see also the 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 major urban development uh, uh, initial eight in the in the in the UK, you can see still through this uh, uh, Corona time and especially step by step to uh, improvement the governance also in the <clears throat> in the in the European cities and certainly also in German cities. Especially, I also mentioned here the pollution and the, in the rural industry area smoke and the uh, respiratory uh, <clears throat> uh, diseases and also the cancers in the in the in the last uh, century. Certainly, this one is always improve a lot of the impact. Of the especially, we come back to the Asia cities. The in the last uh, uh, after Second World War, Japan is also re, uh, the raise their urbanization rent around the 50% uh, to 30%. And especially, they have also uh, give a lot of improvement of this uh, uh, different uh, pollution disaster in the cities. And especially, I would like here point out that the Asia city is much, much more higher density <clears throat> That is normally uh, two or three times uh, higher density than the European cities, and also than the the the, the especially uh, higher than the North America cities. So that is the much more dangerous if the pandemic in the Asia cities comes. So the Asia city is much more nervous. Uh, in history, to the any pandemic, the 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 death is so pandemic is so much nervous in the in history in Asia cities. This is I would like uh, first I would point out through this uh, special uh, development, and uh, very important is the <clears throat> we actually uh, for the urban planner much more. A trip, uh, do the <clears throat> the the our work on the space, on the space arrangement, on the planning of the spatial uh, arrangement. So that is very important. I would like to say for the urban planning, for the urban uh, the urban epidemic uh, prevention is uh, so important uh, for the Chinese cities, for the Asia cities, and the. Uh, but the important is the in the before the epidemic before this years if we say a lot of the invisible planning like the the safe uh, uh, emerging guideways in the city people don't so uh, pay so a lot of attention. In the last decades, they pay much more. First one, much more, pay the attention for the economic growth. But in the last two years, to the last decades, a decade, the ten years, then paid a lot of attention to the history, uh, heritage, paid more attention to the green area for the beautiful movement. But the always very easy to forget this uh, the, the 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 prevention uh, planning for I always say the that's always invisible in this greening area systems. But the today we can really through this uh, 
pandemic in this uh, uh, this year, we can tell the every uh, city leader, uh, so for the government, say very clearly cities where space could be uh, exchanged for the time. It's very important uh, this time if we get the better arrangement and especially we don't demolish that's the invisible planning for our permit <coughs> for the images uh, uh, the prevention planning the ways the space the reserved for the special emergency uh, system the time then we can change this better arrangement of a space to get much more time. For example, uh, we actually in the bigger city planning always reserve a lot of green small uh, parks, uh, like uh, just like we say the pocket uh, green area, very small, the only uh, <clears throat> hundred, even yeah, 300, 400, 500, square meets small green area. This is actually very important for the prevention. Uh, but uh, most people in the last uh, 10 years say it, this is uh, just for the green, for the beautiful of the city. Actually, much more is invisible is for the prevention for this uh, anytime happens the permit uh, epidemic. So it's uh, very important uh, now we say very clearly that through this special arrangement, especially also a lot of uh, the, the, the ways direct to the green area, to the neighboring area of the residential areas, we can see a lot of uh, the green space reserved actually for these emerging uh, the health hospitals. We always actually take a lot of the way and also the final, the space, green space for the, for the emerging hospitals. But the, most people will save the money for this waste, the, the, the range, the luge to the, to the play green place. So if we do it much better, the, just like the, the planning in the, in the space, then we can save a lot of time in this uh, pandemic happens time. Then we de get a lot of days, one week or even three days. It's very, very important uh, these, these three days, one week to take the uh, time. We can enable the efficient uh, allocation of uh, epidemic uh, prevention uh, equipment resources much faster to gathering together and that this is the actually the core points we through changing this uh, space resource to time resource the time resource to get the allocation of epidemic prevention facilities hospitals uh, also the, <clears throat> the 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 doctors that is the much important actually through this fast uh, allocation of uh, the resource of this uh, pandemic uh, uh, prevention we can do much better the, the 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 in the different cities this is the first point i will like say it it's much more important uh, here also uh, i can show you the the case of my uh, students in Wuhan. Uh, they also do much important uh, these uh, three, uh, the, the mobile carbon hospitals. This is actually, we can see it the, the, in the middle range. This is always very easy to forget for the normal urban planning. So we, today we can say very clearly, this is not invisible planning. This is also today we can just uh, show the every people that's the visible should be visible, not invisible planning. Uh, this is very important actually to 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 treatment this pandemic time. 
So this is also uh, the case we do the, a lot of change the uh, space, efficient space, and the, the, the print plate to the space for the emerging time to get much more short time to get the, uh, the, the gathering the facilities and the, also the, uh, the doctor teams from the different uh, uh, the cities fast to very fast to gathering quickly to gathering together. This is the also the I think uh, uh, guest yesterday uh, the the professor from the Wuhan gave you a lot of case, but that this is the point we can see very important that's the faster time to gathering over uh, over um, four take four thousand. Uh, bats together in in one month. If especially we can, I can show you the, also the different uh, very important uh, these facilities, these uh, carbon hospitals. It's uh, you can see the different uh, um, uh, the effect if the three days before we do it and the three days later, it, you can see the pandemic speed. Is pretty, it's a totally different course. So it's the just the, the points come back, better space arrangement, better spatial planning, better spatial uh, preparation for the pandemic time. Then we get much more short time. The short time means the life in the city. That's the first point. The second point, I will I say, the, what can we do as urban planning in this special epidemic uh, uh, time? The, actually, in these times, we much more, uh, normally, the knowledge is uh, divided in three majors. One is the virology, and the second is the defectious diseases, and the third one is the public health. We can actually do not too much for the first, uh, the, the, Area, but with the, for the second and the third one, we can learn a lot. Also, do our much more contribution, and especially in this pandemic time, we very fast to uh, to to make the spatial uh, the the <clears throat> display in our uh, in our team. Every day we uh, the. The, the the update our date from the different province in China, and uh, certainly we also do it for the global in the in one month later. But at the first time, so we in the February, uh, January February, we do it in the in our uh, only in Chinese different provinces, <clears throat> and it's to see the different uh, resource, different uh, uh, the the space arrangement. And the very important is that we also do much more <coughs> uh, concentrated in the different uh, level. The first of all, I think uh, we can do the through the data. We do much more diagnosis for the epidemic uh, situation in different cities, and especially come to the much more detailed place and uh, to the every uh, street, every uh, the, the blocks. This is we can see the very important uh, in the, this is the course here, we can see if the three days uh, later, uh, the all three days early, we can do diff totally different uh, uh, lines to influence the, the, the course of the epidemic time. And so three days is very, very important to see. We also do much more the facilities. Where is the facility? Where is the hospital? Where is the, 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 the patient or patient? And so between the, uh, the, the, the see the exactly the place is, uh, we always ask where should be the best location for the hospital for the carbon hospital, for the normal hospital, can check it very clearly. <clears throat> Certainly, we, and so that's the, I show you the analysis of the 
distance between the, the helper seeks uh, and the, also the hospital, the one third people actually uh, is the over three kilometers. And this is not only the time for the people, it's also through the, it's the public transportation is also much more dangerous. So we should do much better distribution of our hospital and the clinic. And this is to show you the, the, the course, what I say. If the three days early, we can see the totally different course. If the three days later, then we can see also another course. It's the, the time actually we really recognize in the middle, in the Wuhan, the, this course. And then the outside, this is middle size is the discourse. So it's very important to, uh, to, to because from middle to, to, the, uh, in, to the middle of the city, downtown to the, to the outer ring, it's the three days later, then you can see the totally different course. It's also very important, not only the, 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 <clears throat> the, the density, it's also uh, depends on the time to arrangement the facilities. Uh, we are following the every big cities in the from the February, uh, the the Wuhan, Shenzhen, Shanghai, Guangzhou, also Beijing, Dalian, the different big cities. It can we can see the every day's change in the space. So that's we come to very important conclusion I can show you here, uh, here. So we do, the, we do the very fast, the, uh, the, the correlation between the, the, the epidemic situation, the lo location in the city. And uh, then we can see the time. Where is the time the people living in the in the city the different hours and uh, then we found out very very important is the the evening time is very important look much high contribution in shanghai for example the in the in the housing evening from the uh, 22 o'clock to next morning six o'clock the time is most of people in the residential area, this is much more correlated to the epidemic. And the, the second contribution is the, the shopping center, also the recreation evening time. And the third one is the public transportation, 18% contribution. So because this is the during the time in China is the, uh, the new year, Chinese new year time, the spring new year festival. So we don't see a lot of in the contribution related to the company, to the working place. So it's also very important to tell us, very important is the residential area for this prevention of this pandemic situation. So we, uh, in the second, uh, in the 24th February, we, after this, our analysis, we gave the uh, proposal to the city government. We say, uh, don't make the block down the whole city. The whole city need a lot of transportation support and also the, the, the environment, uh, the, the <clears throat> uh, governance, a lot of things should be in emerging support, very fast support even. So don't um, the simply the totally city block down. We should concentrate in the residential area. It's much more important. So afterwards, the treatment is much more concentrated in every community, in every blocks is much more important. The street is much more open for the transportation. And this is actually the contribution from the a lot of academic analysis. We are also one team to uh, in the in the end of February give the 
proposal very fast to the government. And that's the very important we can see where through this exactly the data, where is the correlation much higher to the different time, different space. Uh, that's very important. Uh, this is the what, what we doing between the is <clears throat> here. I actually I would like to say uh, the last uh, words, uh, last points. Uh, this is a very important the community. Uh, community is the most important to anti pandemic uh, defense. Actually, the final important. So we analysis the different uh, people in the in the community and the uh, the left side we show what's the uh, the the epidemic information and what's the epidemic governance can do and the right side we can see what's the intelligent uh, the, the the smart system what what can through the data system can be followed can be support us to this uh, uh, anti-epidemic uh, solution. And uh, through this uh, different, uh, uh, the, the important inference, and then we can see the different uh, treatment, especially just uh, like I just uh, mentioned in the last point, the community is the most important. But uh, the here today, uh, I would like to tell the older students that the difference of the governance of the Chinese cities and uh, the Western cities, very different. The Chinese cities, they have the governance of three levels. The first is the city government, second is the district government. This is also two levels like in Western cities, but the Chinese city have the third one, the city government, uh, like the the, the not from top down government that's also the selected of the people uh, from the community this is the so called the street community the street community uh, the half is the government supported finance but the another uh, is the selected people from the the local people this is the i would like say the some semi uh, government uh, governance. It's, uh, it's very efficient in this time. And uh, the, a lot of uh, the, the people, just the uh, self arrangement uh, and uh, also get the, uh, the, the, the resource, uh, material resource, uh, also the different uh, um, financial resource they arrange for the community in the Chinese cities. That's actually the, the key point, actually, why these Chinese cities do it. This is a show. Uh, this is a point is very important. I would like to say the important is the, for these high density Asia cities, they have not only the two levels, also the the second level, the community, the, uh, the, the street community to, uh, to, to arrange, self-arrange, also the, with the support of the government. This is the block down and they check the every people who come to, who is from the, which uh, uh, go to which family. It's, that's a self uh, arrangement is very, very, special uh, contribution actually for the for the anti epidemic uh, arrangement for the governance uh, we also finally i would like show you also this uh, the the website uh, intelligent city and we do also the the uh, the global covid 19 status and the research we also do the competition of the world uh, the, of the young people they can to uh, predict what's the next week, next four weeks, and uh, through competition, uh, who should be can do the better prediction. It's also a lot of young people from the whole world to do the different uh, 
uh, protection for the for the for the different uh, for the world actually. And the final rate also they get a good, very good uh, the price, the first price, second price. And uh, this is the final rate I would like to say. Uh, when the ex the tenors material and the also energy are uh, introduced inside of the cities. This I always use the city beings as a life, yeah. Is that the internal urban space ready or carry? That's always the question. And finally, I always like to say the external elements are necessary for the required size for the urban development. But the urban space carries is the warmth. This is always very important. So sometimes we always think that a good city carries can will hold the positive external elements. But the important is can we, the city, also on another side, do well performance cities can also take the positive elements well and also can also resist the negative external elements. This is also in the life of the cities, in the development of the city history. So it's very important we also not only do it, we also to see the very important. So the city is important is how can you control the entrance of the city being open, totally open, or in the emergency time, very fast, close. This is the, the important the key point. I think this is the ability very required for the next planning, the, the core ability to with this the outside uh, impact. This is uh, last words, I will I say the urban governance come back to this Jia Yuan. Jia Yuan means Jia is the family, Yuan means the garden. The family garden in China, Jia Yuan means the we together in this block, this the Jia Yuan. So I, the last words I will I say, urban governance come back to Jia Yuan. Urban governance, come, urban planning come back to this invisible planning in the past, now we can visible for the governance, for the public. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Wu. It was really interesting to learn from exchanging uh, space for time to this um, Jia Yuan idea on urban governance. Now we only have approximately one minute for a question. So I like now to take one question if anyone is interested yeah. in asking. So Ben in the chat box asks, understand exchange green space for built space, exchange space for time. So Professor, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, okay, good, thank you. Good. Well, shall I? I'm so sorry. Yes, I have to. Just a moment, yeah. I. This is Zoom. Yeah. Huh? Sure. This is okay. This is don't share the screen. Ah, huh, here. Yeah. I found it. Hmm. Yes, thank you. Good. Yeah, great. So on the issue of exchange space for time, can you briefly ex explain a little bit? We'll have um, an upcoming guest speaker soon. Sorry, it seems Professor Wu has um, dropped offline. We'll have Mr. Yaming Xu from World Economic Forum 
to bring on us to bring to us a presentation about IoT and planning. Thank you, Lisa. And I will share my screen now. You can see it, right? Okay, great. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I my presentation is more focused on technology side. So the reflection is that how technology can support the COVID-19 uh, uh, recovery and also control. And in the further is that how the IoT relevant high technology can support future uh, city development. So we'll call it, it's a great reset, right? So how we recover from COVID-19 and also the nature diseases. Uh, just the past uh, national holidays, uh, everybody can feel it. So we can see that uh, more than 13 million people just uh, travel by flight and totally it's 63 million uh, people in China have uh, experience of the domestic um, traveling during the past eight days. So my feeling is that it's almost back to normal uh, just a little difference is that everybody make a mask on the faces. You can see this is a handsome boy or a beautiful lady in front of you. But we feel that uh, the life is back. You can see this is the very famous Wuhan uh, mobile cable hospital and previously it's, uh, it's a studio, studio, right? It's already back to the studio again. People play badminton inside and here is the street in Qingdao and during COVID-19 it's all blocked down, uh, lockdown, everybody is locked down at home and here is the night of the of the road so people just traveling and shopping and eating so on. You can see that uh, in China maybe it's the only places we can uh, quick, uh, quickly go back to normal and who are the heroes? Definitely doctors and nurses and um, public health relevant experts, so on. But remember, another part is that City Express, which said that it's quite a shock, right? Uh, in the three months of the lockdown at home, this provide the necessary uh, goods or living stuff that make your life feel. Uh, basic normal. And be behind it, what happened is that we have e economic, right? We have Alibaba, we have we have uh, Tencent, we have Jingdong, we have everything. And also we have AI and big data supported. So the third one is the national uh, logistic network, which is really helping uh, the city express that uh, can uh, function uh, normally. And this is a very important uh, element. Also, what is that? And uh, uh, besides people, here is a lot of devices uh, take a lot of action. You have uh, uh, demo uh, devices, cameras, uh, you have a robot working in different um, uh, uh, hospitals, and also you Everybody know in China, you know that we have a QD code everywhere. And we also use uh, the drone in the cities uh, to uh, do some uh, work that people cannot handle. And this is uh, what happened in China and also is expressed in the worldwide. Here, through the data, through the IoT devices, and we can a lot of data. And see here, here is uh, some kind of analysis that here, uh, who are the uh, human, uh, what, kind, uh, what gender of the, of the people get infected and what is the uh, area of the cities get infected and what is the trend of the, of the travel and the relationship of the people, uh, about affected people. And this is the three uh, fundamental questions. You, need to, you don't need to answer because the data already answered for you is that who you are, where you come from, and where you want to go, right? And I think that is the data, this is the, this is something that uh, the data 
uh, can tell you and also tell the relevant uh, public uh, officers. So there's kind of a re reflection. Is that from the personal rights and health and safety, how you balance that? There's no right or wrong. You just say that the COVID-19 is dramatically impacted your life and also the city development, city operation, city function. And we feel safe because we contribute our privacy and personal freedom to these bigger public services. We contribute our data, our trends of the traveling to uh, public services, right? But in different way, you can say this is wrong or this is right. I would like to say that in a certain uh, situation, just like COVID-19, we need to balance a rethink which one is more important. I have no answer. This is a reflection and you have your answer by your own self. And we say that after COVID-19, we, we need to understand the data power, but also limit them in the right approach or right dimension. How we can protect our privacy, how we can use the data to increase the job security, how we can uh, balance the personal freedom and also the city uh, uh, pandemic uh, control, right? So this is the thing that we want uh, everybody to have uh, a thing and also give your own answers on that part. What is the re resilient cities? Here is the organization, uh, o o uh, OECD has their uh, uh, definition. I don't want to go through it, but also that they mentioned two things. First is that instant shock, just like nature diseases, uh, earthquake, COVID-19, and also long term uh, uh, pressure, just like job, high housing uh, price, and also uh, environmental uh, uh, changes and so on. So according to economy, society, governments, and the environment, they have a different things, uh, KPIs, and also um, uh, key important uh, deliverables that we can uh, put go, uh, working together to go through it. What IoT and also relevant uh, technology, we call it the, in the envelope of the, the fourth industry revolution, IoT, AI, blockchain are the major um, cornerstone technologies. And then there's different applications, like what we said is drone and a smartphone, uh, smart home and uh, autonomous vehicles, so on. Uh, precision medicine is all uh, burned by the first uh, technology, uh, first industry revolution. Inside is very important things, uh, two things, very important things. First one is then how we can connect the physical world to digital world. And then is that how we can use the power of the data to, to shape the future of the world, right? So here is the logic link about IoT can support. Uh, from the physical world, we have we have a lot of sensors, devices that they capture the, the information. And then we have the data, right? It's the raw data uh, after the AI um, processing, we have an algorithm, and we can see this, what is the information behind the data. And the information can guide the decision making. And then we have some actions and feedback to the real world. So this is a kind of loop that can improve the state of the physical world. For example, uh, just like Professor Wu mentioned it, in Wuhan or in Shanghai, how we can identify or analyze the uh, pandemic exposure, what is the trend, what is the people's movement, so on. So we use a lot of IoT data uh, and also devices to, to uh, assess the, uh, the information or decision making. So here is that a lot of things that we can use uh, by the IoT uh, devices and IoT technologies, pandemic diseases, accidents, building uh, life cycle management and uh, energy smart uh, smart grid, smart transportation, 
uh, air pollution, uh, public security for sure, and also the uh, city management. Maybe you know that most of the most of the cities in China, over six six hundred of the cities in China already uh, implemented or have the plan of the smart cities. That means big city like Beijing and Shanghai, a lot of smart applications, have a smart infrastructure, and also city level, city brand, a smart city a centralized uh, operation center, big screen, a lot of data, show on screen, a lot of people is working beside the computer or cell phone to see what is the uh, information, how we can make decision, uh, uh, so on. So that is the uh, IoT and AI uh, based smart city main. So, but there is a challenge worldwide is that when a new technology appears, and this is dramatically the application and also technology itself can dramatically increase. And you can see this is a, the technology can burn very fast. And but another side is that how you can see. The, policy, uh, technology governance, uh, regulation. It's not really uh, re uh, updates very uh, fast according to the technology trend. So, so there is a big gap between the technology governance and also the technology uh, development. Even uh, imagine that when a new technology appears, but there is no way to understand it or no way to uh, control it. This is a disaster, right? Just a nuclear. You can use the nuclear to build the nuclear uh, power station, but you can use it to make a bomb. So how to control it, how to understand the new technology, how to use it to our uh, real life. This is our mission. It's the World Economic Forum uh, stand for. So what do we see that? Uh, how we can really fight from uh, the pandemic and we are looking for a great reset. The great reset is slogan for 2021 uh, Davos annual meeting. So here we use that slogan. It's very important is that how we can unlock the power of the IoT and also relevant technology and to transfer the space where, where we live, we work and play more sustainable, more resilient, more uh, equitable. So here is uh, some expert uh, uh, domain where we are focusing on uh, uh, home, uh, museum or working places, agricultural fields, hospital, market, so on. So uh, back to the uh, topic, resilient cities. My feeling is that just like body, you need to uh, let the uh, the organization or the cities can reborn or uh, or re reject yourself. And there is a kind kind of technology and also the governments that can provide this kind of power. Just that you have some um um how's that hurt on the skin, but you will recover by yourself. You even don't know it. And inside is the uh, is the Intel automatic system can support it. What we call it the automatic system is not just the technology itself, but also the, how people understand it, how people organize as a society, how we say this is the community or this is the place we live, how we can contribute ourselves into it to involve into the big issues and put it all selves uh, into a big picture. So here I would like to see that most of the people uh, participant in that I see here is the 58 uh, uh, eight year. So I think most of the people are young people, young students, right? The future is yours, and and we would like to contribute you, you would like to contribute yourself into this uh, project and see how we can understand the world, how we can influence it, because it's the home eventually uh, for you for the decade, right? So here is some projects relevant to, uh, to cities we're running. 
uh, infrastructure, uh, digital, um, city, uh, inclusive, res uh, resilient, so on. What we see is that uh, as the biggest worldwide um, collaboration organization, Forum is uh, uh, how to say that, engaging with different governments, uh, business leaders, academians, and also uh, social uh, organizations to, uh, we thought it is a, a multi-stakeholder and we launched different events and projects to increase the communication, increase collaboration between different people. We find a way to say, hey, this is our vision inside uh, shaping the future of the world shaping the future of the resilient city. And this is uh, a lot of projects will keep going. The second one is that uh, during the last um, Japan G20 um, summit, we launched a new uh, global uh, uh, project, the Smart City Alliance. It's a technology alliance relevant to future smart city development. The, the uh, story is that in the past 40 years or even longer time, different cities in different um, countries have their own understanding of the smart name. And then they have their own learning and experience and also the journey to match into that mission or vision. And now we need to have more uh, co uh, consolidation of world experience and ideas into a global vision. How we see the uh, global smart city looks like. How we can contribute to a more smart world. And how we can uh, define uh, the governance and also a governance framework and also the relevant uh, KPIs uh, for this goal. So this is a very big and global organization and we will also uh, launch the first uh, international pilot city who can learn and adapt the uh, government um, framework from the study uh, in uh, November. Uh, so one or two Chinese cities will be inside, of course, uh, North America, American, Canada, South American, European, Middle East, there's a lot of city on the list. The last one I want to share with you is that during the academic, uh, during the uh, pandemic, uh, consumer wearables uh, uh, contribute a lot of information to support the COVID-19 um, control and uh, 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 prevention. The thing is that we, our research on this part is that we would like to understand the data from the variable uh, devices. We really support, of course, support the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, fight, but also how we can identify the boundary of the data application, data ownership, data, data rights of usage, and also data privacy, data security, so on. This is a very important and also uh, critical question that can uh, maybe a roadblock to uh, prevent the smart technology merge into the city's development, but also maybe it's kind of power to push smart city uh, go forward. It depends on how we understand it, and it depends on how we can so uh, find a way to solve the the question. Just like I said, it ownership, privacy, security, uh, market value, so on. So that's what we uh, now working on, and I really invite uh, world experts and young talents join the global researchers on that part. The last word I want to say is that. Uh, just like Professor Wu mentioned, uh, the, the city is not building, it's not the road, it's not uh, the infrastructures, it's people. It's people we 
live in the physical uh, world, but we also uh, inject. Uh, we also have a digital world that can uh, have kind of com uh, collaboration or community between the physical world. So there's the three uh, fundamental things that I see that uh, the resilient city must uh, maintain. One is the people. So people's resilience, people's healthy, people's safety is most important thing. Second thing is that the physical world, the physical order and the physical uh, infrastructure can support that, right? The third one is the digital world. So how the digital uh, equipment, digital data, and digital um, technology can all, always back to the physical world and the people and have some, uh, how say that, tech for good, right? So this is what uh, my understanding about this topic. So thank you, it's my presentation. Thank you so much, Mr. Xu. So now we'll have 10 minutes of Q&A sessions. Please feel free to ask questions either through raise hands by participant caps or type in the chat box. So um, I actually have a question first, and this is when we're contacting something I ask you about. From your industry insights, what do you think it's the largest barrier here to actually install the Internet of Things and to actually make it a tool for resiliency? Well, I think there's two two things. First one is the technology or an economic way. Is that uh, IoT is kind of uh, technology that can connect the physical world and capture the data to the digital world, right? So we, if we must, we, if we understand better the physical world, we need to have a lot of sensors or a lot of devices that can uh, give us more data, right? But the problem, economic or and uh, technology side is that how we can have more cheaper uh, and affordable and, and massive uh, devices that we can use everywhere. Just like a light sensor or humidity sensor maybe cost 50 or 100 yuan. Uh, and if in a building you have a 1,000 or 10,000 of the sensors, you are say, well, it's not affordable because the economic point of view is that too expensive. So this is the one thing I say that we need more a solution or business model on that part. The second one is that uh, understanding and also the uh, the um, order about using the data from IoT side. So everybody mentioned or concerned about uh, data privacy and data security, and we don't have a unique answer about it. So first is that we need to have kind of communication and equation to different people. What is the IoT means? What is the data means? What is the digital means, right? And people understand it, and then we can launch more uh, uh, profounded uh, and, uh, discussion to say, if we met this kind of issue or challenge, what is the right way of thinking, how we can discuss and then find a common, um, maybe, it's uh, maybe it's not common, but it's a compromised way that people acceptable and solve it. So, for example, data privacy, they have no answer yet. There's no regulation, there's no national law, there's no international uh, recognition. And that's the biggest issue I, I see. Right, it was really interesting. So. I'd like to know your perspective on how COVID has impacted this transitioning to a more um, technology accessible approach. So yesterday, Professor Ying Long and 
Qingming Zhan, they took a really positive approach on seeing this opportunity as a good transition for us to be more adaptive and more um, acclimate to the technology. Do you think that's the case? Uh, I feel that there's different things. Uh, we will publish our flagship report on November. And here uh, on, in that report, we have kind of focus of the IoT market. First is that uh, we see the curve is like that. So uh, there is a timeline that uh, IoT market is a little bit lower the expectation because the impact of COVID-19 is very simple. It's a lot of uh, uh, business activities and also um, um, manufacturing is just uh, blocked or stopped during COVID, right? So there is a, a limit of the uh, IoT um, and business. Uh, but after the COVID-19, it's recovered and also over our ex ex uh, expectation very sharply. But in some, re uh, uh, some kind of, uh, some field, for example, a uh, smart factory. So uh, human beings play a very important part in the industry sector. But during COVID, you can see if you have better uh, level of the, of the, of, uh, of the of, uh, uh, automation, you can survive and even live better. And that very uh, deeply increase the IoT devices and uh, AI technology application in the uh, manufacturing. Also, pub, uh, public sectors is like um, smart building, smart transportation, smart grid, uh, use a lot of IoT data, uh, IoT devices. So that's the trend that we can see in different places. That um, so we were limit, we were control the uh, uh, human beings uh, uh, presence in in some um, region or in some. Uh, domain. So that is the part we see uh, IoT market where expansion in short term. We see that in industry and also smart uh, city level. But another thing we see some of the um, some of the uh, uh, area where we're not very not having good news is it's not because the technology itself, because of the some of the um, uh, industry just uh, can't recover from the impact of COVID-19. So it really depends on the, the situation, but we have very good uh, confidence about future IoT technology application uh, in the cities or in different uh, industries. Great, thank you. We'll take one more question. So Shifan asks, would the use of technology itself also have an impact on the physical landscape of economic activities? Say if all events are happening online, e-commerce, e-retail, would that negatively impact the physical economic activities happening? For sure, it will impact a lot of things. Uh, just like you said, if you go to a shopping mall, you you are really do two things, right? First is that you you try a clothes, but you don't run to buy it uh, instantly. You are search online to compare the price and also find the online channel to buy. It. Uh, and also after uh, during COVID nineteen, a lot of aged people forced to use the uh, cell phone to buy uh, food to buy. Uh, living stuff, so on, and that means uh, most a lot of uh, age people or or uh, people who don't use a lot of uh, cell phone for uh, e commercials just uh, join in the army, right? So this is good thing that e commerce we are increasing people's uh, capability of the uh, cons uh, consumer consume. But a bad news for the physical uh, market is that some of the some of the market will disappear, and some of the market will merge with e-commerce. 
connect. Just like you know, Suning Dian Qi, right? Suning is the big one of the biggest uh, uh, electronic market, and now they have a lot of activities is linked online, so on. Uh, what we see is that always in different way, in different uh, timing, always some old fashioned uh, business will die, and newborn. Uh, business were born and also merged with the existing or traditional business. So that's the nature law. And we say that we count 100% living in a digital world where our people are or, or real or physical, our house are real or physical, our world is physical. So I still believe that we need the physical services, we need the physical market, we need a lot of uh, physical uh, uh, city services and community. So I still believe that the digital world and the physical world can survive together and must, do, must be the way. All right. All right. Thank you so much. So now we're going to enter the next topic. It was really interesting learning the links between technology and urban forms. So now onto the topic of resilient and health health city. Let's welcome Dai Zhongliu on climate smart cities of China. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Uh, uh, okay, thank you, everyone. Good morning. Good uh, evening. Uh, today, I will present uh, climate smart cities comprehensive strategy, in particular. Uh, during the post-pandemic uh, uh, era. Uh, I'm from the World Resource Institute. We are kind of a think tank and do tank from the USA. And I'm from the China office. Uh, before we talking about things about the climate smart uh, strategy, let's uh, uh, briefly talk about the COVID-19 impacts globally and China. Uh, this is uh, the la latest figures from globally. You can find uh, clearly the COVID-19 have the second wave, in particular in Spain, UK, and the US, these countries. Uh, but in China, uh, you can see uh, the left up. Uh, China is a country where during the uh, uh, last week, it's a golden week in China, we only find 21 confirmed cases. So overall, China controlled the situation very well. Uh, and the, uh, the, you can also see the COVID-19 impact on China's economic. So uh, below side is a manufacturing uh, PMI from China. So you can find a drop uh, very dramatic during the January and the February. But now we are go back to normal. So this is uh, PMI is back to uh, normal. And the GDP today is uh, three or four percent uh, last season. So they are. Uh, even they are below the normal, but they are uh, recover quickly. Uh, so here I can show some other uh, indicators that's below the normal. You can find schedule of lights. It's a still uh, it's a, uh, uh, still below the normal, and the metro trips and the resort uh, uh, the spending is below the normal. But back to the normal, you can find the coal consumption is back to the normal. The road traffic and the property sales is even more than uh, the same uh, uh, period during the 2019. So, so you can find the different area, the recovery speed is, is uh, very diverse. And then the next one is uh, traffic. The first one you can find is uh, back to the normal is uh, passenger traffic, the car, uh, and the congestion uh, across 100 cities in China is really uh, uh, more congested compared to the uh, 2019. And uh, but the public transportation, uh, the readership is still below the normal. You can find this is uh, the major Chinese city from Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen. Uh, today, the daily readerships is only 80 to 85 percent as a uh, euro in 2019. So the public transportation is below the normal, but the, the, the congestion is more than normal, huh? Uh, and another interesting thing is about the uh, what happened during the Wuhan city lockdown uh, during the January uh, 23rd to the March 12th. 
during that period, we, we, we can find the people have a, a, a significant change on the travel mode. So you can find the, the, the share bikes, the bikes uh, take account almost 56% of all our trips. So the, this is a very interesting uh, the figure that tell you during the Wuhan lockdown, most of people uh, uh, shorten their travel distance. And this is a uh, very uh, uh, brilliant uh, the evidence to support us the next uh, phases in our strategy. That's called uh, the 15 minutes, the neighborhood planning. So because people only need the bicycle in a very short times to, to, to can cover all the, the need, uh, cover the need of the uh, life. So this is a very interesting thing. And another one is a very important background we need to think about because a lot of people say the COVID is a link to the population density. They think in very crowded areas where we have more easy to be inflected or, or have higher as the, the confirmed cases. But World Bank study uh, shows that in Chinese cities, the, the confirmed case is not directly related to the urban density, not, not directly linked to, to the population densities. And the quite similar research from the New York cities you can uh, they, uh, do a more uh, specific the, the, the com uh, comparison but, uh, based on the, the neighborhood scale. You can find the neighborhood have a different the, the density uh, of uh, residential densities in the left side and the confirmed case in the right side, the figures. So it's from the direct sense, it's not linked. Uh, a lot of area where it's very high density but very low confirmed cases and the most uh, uh, a very uh, low density uh, neighborhood. It, it's uh, interesting, its name is a Corona. The, the district have, have very highest the density. So this is another question we need to answer about the pandemic. That's a urban urbanization is not the reason of uh, the, the COVID spread. And, uh, and then we also think, uh, uh, observe some other things happened. That's a co-conception. At the power plant in China now is uh, higher than the uh, 2019. This is a quite interesting thing. So we call it a range of pollution. And this kind of uh, 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 things you can also find in other uh, the crisis, like the oil crisis, like 2008, the global financial crisis. You can find they have a range of pollution. So this is the things we need to think about. Uh, here I show you some figures about the, 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 the NOx, the air pollutant issues in China. You can find in the January and the February, the all, all China's NOx, the, the pollutant is quite rare, but today they are coming, coming back. And uh, from uh, the, the right side, Beijing, Guangzhou, Shanghai, Shenzhen, the, the, the larger city in, in China, from the January to the August, most of the city have the same uh, the, the trade that they go back to the air pollutants. So this is another issue that we need to think about. So this is why today when we're talking about the, the post-pandemic era, the big question is we are not just a build back. We need to thinking build forward. We call it a build back better. So this is why uh, 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 we need this thinking the COVID is not only the threat, but also the opportunity for, for, for China. Uh, because uh, not only the recessions, but we can have this opportunity to change the climate change and also by uh, biodiversity, uh, the collapse. So this is uh, uh, the figure show you most of the Chinese city is the coastal, coastal cities. They are very easy to be, uh, ha have a big damage during the, the sea level uh, uh, rising. So uh, I think this is why China, our president Xi Jinping just announced that China want to achieving the carbon neutrality before 2060. This is the reason that we saw the opportunity uh, during the post-pandemic, we have a, a, a more uh, ambitions on this one. So uh, that's why WI, we are start thinking about this one and the launch our new program is called uh, the Climate Smart Program. And uh, uh, we start to thinking about to promote a comprehensive strategy for Chinese urban cities. Uh, cities to promote the, the comprehensive solution for the, the, the resilience. And when we're talking about resilience, more people thinking a uh, very narrow focus on the flooding or storm water issue. But actually, we have a very diverse uh, the, the challenges about resilience, not only the, the flooding, 
but also the heat, the pandemics, the time, and the social justice, and also infrastructure as a value and the housing affordable, the aging facilities. So these are all, they are all the challenges we need to think about the urban resilience, not only the flooding. Uh, so uh, we do some research and reading some papers and we thinking, uh, I similar as uh, the, the Dr. Xu just mentioned, we need to think in climate smart cities have uh, three uh, P, three areas we need to uh, focus. One is a climate smart city for people and for place and for process. For each area, uh, we're thinking we, we, have, we can find some leverage points. For example, for people, we want to create uh, a, a climate smart 15 minutes neighborhood. As what I just talked about the Wuhan during the lockdown areas, Wuhan, most of the citizens are only uh, living within the 15 minutes, the, the bicycle, uh, the circles. Can, 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 can for, uh, uh, afford it for almost one month. So that means the 15 minutes, a neighborhood can play a very important role for the future. And the next one, we need to think in climate smart city for the place. That means uh, building environment or infrastructure, in particular for the lifeline infrastructure. So we need to find a strategy for uh, infrastructure. Uh, uh, and the, the last one, we need to think in the process. That means uh, we need to enhance the climate, the governance, in particular, use a data platform to help the, our government to make a better decision, a smart uh, decision on the, uh, how to uh, measure climate. So this is uh, the overall the comprehensive strategy. But for each one, we can find uh, some uh, uh, bullets. Uh, we, we, we want to uh, go deeply. For example, climate smart strategy for people, we, we need the first one to identify climate risks and improve adaptation uh, capacity and also establish the planning and the design guidelines. Well, the, the reason we call this a strategy is climate smart, because we are not only focused on the climate change and mitigation, but we also need to think about the adaptation and the resilience. So this is why uh, we are not only for the reduce the CO2 emission, but we also need to think in how to adapt uh, if the temperature uh, rests up 1.5 degree. So this is uh, the the background, we need to have the neighborhoods to do small, uh, a smart decision on it. But the reason now for, for China's neighborhood is they didn't have a capacity because the different the community or neighborhood, they really face the different cha challenges for the, the resilience. Some uh, community, maybe the flooding is a big issue. Some areas maybe the drying, uh, uh, the, the heating is an issue. And some uh, community, maybe the, the older people is an issue. So. Uh, this is the first thing we need to have the city uh, uh, thinking about this one. The good thing is a uh, very good uh, the signal from the ch uh, Chinese city like Beijing, Shanghai. They already created the 15 minutes neighborhood strategy by the year 2017 or 2018. Uh, they are target uh, is uh, uh, make the city really happen the 15 minutes uh, the life cycle by the year 2035. But the this is a very uh, a high level strategy. But when, when you go to the, the neighborhood, go to the community, you can find they really very challenging because it's a really diverse. And uh, what kind of action or measure we can use is uh, quite complicated. Uh, then uh, we can show some cases that is where it works, the community side to, to do the climate smart the, the, the action the strategy. Like uh, from the sure, 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 sure. uh, master plan. Uh, we can find the, uh, the the launch of a program called uh, the cool uh, the cool roof. Uh, uh, that's pending the roof of the building to reduce the tem uh, the temperature. So uh, this is a very uh, brilliant uh, the ideas that uh, can, can can innovate Chinese local community. For example, just this program, they can reduce the air condition cost by ten percent to thirty percent, and also can reduce the internal buildings temperatures up to the thirty percent in the summer. And you know, China already starts thinking about the roof for solar power panels program. So this can achieve more uh, benefits from this kind of a program. And they can contribute to the, to the community levels. And also in the community uh, uh, neighborhood scale, we can find the green roof, the water pumping, the rain, the vegetable garden, the green street, low carbon transportation, public engagement and education. So we can do a lot of uh, actions based on the community. 
uh, and very important things during the community works. We need to have them uh, uh, to, to establish the capacity uh, in the neighborhood because so far in our the community management office, nobody really understands the challenges from the climate change and uh, how uh, action or measures they can they can handle to 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 uh, change these uh, challenges. So this is why we have we need to have them to have a, a developed a design approach or guidelines. And we also need to have them to build up uh, the mechanism that uh, they have full time staff really understand uh, and aware a trend occurring uh, to know how to handle this uh, climate and the resilience issues very comprehensive. And also need to cre uh, create a, a cross departure platforms it, because every uh, because it's too complicated. No one department can control all the, the resilience issues. So we need to build up a cross departure uh, uh, coordination platform so that the full time staff can work. And, the, and, the, uh, and also we need to give the community side climate risk investigation tools to help them to identify the problem. So this is the three uh, the many areas we are focused today. And we are uh, and, and WI have a start that's a community climate risk survey uh, from the August. We have, uh, we pick up almost 15 communities in Shenzhen. Uh, and we do some survey from the different group of uh, residents and also from the government officer. And uh, we want to uh, have them to uh, 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 build up, uh, establish their climate risk awareness and also have them to find uh, the climate risk the interventions. And uh, during the community uh, interventions finance, we need to thinking about, about how to get the money for the community to support them actions for the next uh, a few years. So this is the first part of the climate smart strategy for the people. And the second part is for uh, place. Uh, for place is uh, are more complicated because they are focused on uh, infrastructure and the building environment. So uh, we want to uh, start from the analysis and the summarize the, the international case is quite easy. And then we need to think about to establish the climate risk because framing tools and the method and also implement and assess the, some, some pilot program. And, but this is a very, uh, uh, this perspective, uh, this uh, program's perspective is very meaningful for China because China investment a lot of money into the uh, urban infrastructure area. So they are also uh, the top countries that's easy to have a huge economic loss due to the increase the climate the, the surface. So, uh, and uh, we, we also discussion with our government that's uh, in the early phase, when you invest more money into making the uh, new infrastructure more resilient, you can achieve more net benefit compared with the other methodology like the early warning system or, or protecting the, 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 the infrastructures. So, so that's uh, making the new infrastructure resilience is the most uh, important way and the most uh, benefit cost the ratio highest way. So uh, this is, uh, uh, the first step we can work together with the Chinese local government how to move it and we can learn from the London resilience place action plan they have a lot of things like uh, uh, put the, the new infrastructure more resilient and the zero carbon like the highway the metro system and make the uh, more uh, uh, put more data sensors to uh, measurement and also we need to think about uh, uh, innovation and the business to make it happen and uh, we also can find some other cases from the, the one New York City, the, the long, the, the Western uh, planning, 2050. Uh, they have uh, uh, improved, for example, they want to use the digital uh, methodologies to improve the resilience of uh, streets. They can put sensors, 5G, I, I big data. So, so, so uh, that's make the street more resilient during the storm water or heating systems. And this is also very well uh, matched with the vision of China's new uh, infrastructure scheme uh, for the post pandemic uh, recovery. And uh, we are also need to think about this. And China also have very good, uh, successful uh, programs that uh, have uh, infrastructure more resilience. We call it uh, the Sponge City programs. And uh, you can find that the, the Shenzhen is, uh, have a very long history of uh, water management. Uh, 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 during the uh, before the sponge cities, huh? 
but they are targeting is only slowing inner city flooding and enhanced the rainwater reuse. But they in China, we not. I mean, talking about the lifeline infrastructure not only means the water facilities or water management plan, but it also means other infrastructures. So, uh, so that's other means today, Shenzhen need to think about not only water, but also electricity, transportation, or communication facilities. And we can also uh, skill up our smart cities uh, program to other areas. For example, in Beijing, the, the latest new uh, international airport, uh, Beijing Daxing Airport, uh, they are already integrated with the sponge uh, uh, programs. So, uh, uh, so they are uh, so Beijing Daxing International Airport can fully uh, collect the rainwater and uh, fully treatment it uh, in savage and achieving almost zero discharge. And uh, today, the natural storage of uh, water on the side has uh, reached almost uh, seven hundred thousand cubic meters. And uh, you can also show some uh, here. Can also show some cases about Japan, uh, how to management the, the the food control measures installed in the subway. So even during a very extreme the climate uh, the period, they can uh, like typhoon or or, or, or water uh, or torrential rains. The, the measures then still can work. And uh, for example, like a pandemic areas. The, how we move the, the, the metro system working is also a big issue. So we need our uh, thinking and prepare very for it. And also in UK, the con con concrete wall and the flood gap uh, also installed to protect the utility side for UK. So during the typhoon, we still have, can have a electric the power supply. So this is the way. And the last part is we need the thinking make our garments have a better governance, the capacities. That means the process. So we are uh, completed the, the superstructure and top level design. We need to have a top level design for the government, how to manage the climate. So far, they are uh, disparate uh, to a lot of uh, departments. More than 30 departments have a function related to climate change. But we need to think about how to design a new top, top level design to integrate and the coordination between the different departments and also developed the relevant tools and platform and improve the market, the, the participation. So this is uh, uh, some also the, some other actions from the London can show to you. Uh, for example, London have an adaptive greater London authority. So that's authority can management all issues related to climate change. Uh, and also they have a lot of uh, tools to support them. For example, the Google just launched a new uh, environment in, uh, impact uh, evaluation tools. So for these tools, they already go to a very macro level. For example, they can evaluate the air pollutant, uh, air quality based on the street. They can, they can evaluate different streets with uh, different air quality issues. And also they can thinking about transportation emission based on the different uh, transit, uh, transportation mode. For example, this street have a more a path for a uh, bicycle and a more bus line, they can have better uh, the transportation emission evaluation results. And also, if that's true, they can uh, evaluate different building emission and even the solar power, the solar uh, power e emission on the top of the buildings. So we can find a lot of uh, internet company at the end already start to think about have the government to have better climate management and the governance capacities. And uh, in New York City, they, also, they have a very complicated the, 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 the tools. They can not only evaluate the, 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 the sea level rise or, 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 or quality, they also can, can have a heat risk, uh, also have a green roof, green space, uh, blah, blah, blah. They can have a lot of uh, functions to help permanent understood. And uh, also the urban footprint can evaluate the different community, how to uh, face uh, the sea levels rising. So this is a very important tool also for the developer. They can know, the, they can evaluate the risk of that uh, piece of the land. And the dark orange here indicates that the special flooding the hazard areas can and uh, impacted the peso in Miami, Florida. And the last the governance is we need to have the government thinking about where the money coming from, not only from the public fund, how we involve the marketing uh, uh, 
involvement. So uh, this is uh, from the UK. We're thinking some uh, uh, very financial innovation this mechanism like uh, uh, insurance. So for example, in UK, they link the insurance with uh, a baseline with uh, the, the sea levels, uh, the river levels, uh, and they give, give back the, the, the insurance. Uh, the, the catastrophic insurance based on the different flooding level and the receive return. So this is a quite a complicated system. But again, we think today we need to use that uh, the post COVID the opportunity to promote a very comprehensive strategy for the city. We need to really thinking the resilience climate as the one and use a lot of uh, new uh, data, new methodologies. So uh, climate smart cities, we are really welcome all of you to join us. Because this program just started and we are just to start with one or two cities and, and hoping uh, we can have more Chinese cities to join and uh, use all of the global uh, the, the experience to help us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Liu. So due to time concern, we only have three minutes. So um, please feel free to ask any questions you have. So in the chat box, we have two. So first is from Xia. The non-direct correlation between COVID confirmed density and the population density, then what about the economic development of the local community and racial disparity in the US? Uh, okay, so... Uh... Uh, currently, we didn't have the, the ec economic development in our so uh, details the, the scale in, in, in China, like, like the local community. Uh, but with, uh, from uh, the city as a whole, we're thinking most of the uh, city are going, uh, in China, are going back uh, in quite similar the speed, uh, like the GDP, like uh, make a rich, come back to the city area. So, uh, we try to find some more figures about the economic link to the community library. Maybe in the future, we can find some research. Great, thank you. So the next one is from Ting Zhang. Um, what do you see as the changes of resilient city guidelines for China before and after COVID-19? Uh, the first of all, we're thinking about that's a, a, the measurement mechanism in the community level. Uh, this time, before and after, we be thinking more important. We play more important roles. We call it the DNA uh, mechanism, measurement mechanism, like uh, the, the community management office. So we want to put more functions for the community uh, management office. And uh, one, uh, for example, in Beijing, they already have a full-time uh, urban planner going to the community management office. And now we want to put more uh, function to this kind of full-time staff, like. They need to be trained by the, the how to face the, the challenges from the climate and the resilience issues. So we, uh, before and after, we're thinking the, the measurement, uh, uh, the mechanism of a measurement roles are, are be enhanced. It. And the second one, we're thinking use uh, the, this pandemic to China means we need to thinking uh, build back better. So this is another thing so we, we're thinking it's different. Uh, because use this opportunity, we how do we make the air pollution issues, where the, the, the carbon neutrality issues uh, really happen? It's another opportunity. Uh, before the COVID, we never talked too deeply about this issue, but now we are really very hot topic in China. And uh, we're thinking uh, we have a lot of uh, good things happen now. Yeah. Thank you. So we have a very good question in the chat box, but we'll leave that toward the end. Let's welcome Professor Lan Wan on her presentation of health city planning in post-COVID era. Thank you so much, Mr. Liu. Hello, everyone. Thanks a lot uh, uh, for the invitation from Professor uh, Wu Weiping, uh, Chong Yuan, and also uh, Qian Fang. And uh, I wanna uh, talk about uh, uh, my research um, on healthy city planning today. All right, um, so first of all, as you may all know, um, urban planning is basically initiated um, for the public health issue 
uh, back in the uh, 1900s uh, for the um, uh, industry cities. So Zoling um, actually helped a lot um, to ensure sunlight and uh, uh, ventilation for buildings. Um, this is what I would call the healthy city version one, uh, which uh, through urban planning, uh, we actually protect the basic um, health issues um, for the cities, for the local residents. But then after the um, development, uh, urban planning and uh, um, public health actually um, may not talk about with each other for quite a long time. Uh, around the 1980s, the World Health Organization realized that uh, the uh, increasing of uh, overweight uh, diabetes actually um, should go back to urban planning to think about uh, what the urban planning can do for um, public health. Uh, as we can see here, uh, the concept of um, healthy city um, was proposed by WHO uh, around uh, 1984 and the detailed definition was given around 1994. So it is calling for we built a city that can um, continuously create and improve uh, the physical and the social environments and expanding uh, the local uh, the community resources to support people's health and also enable to people uh, enable people to perform um, their full function. Uh, of life and uh, developing their uh, maximum potential. And uh, this is quite broad concept, um, but uh, in the detail, healthy city uh, and healthy city planning uh, research and practice, we actually would start from um, uh, this, what we call the uh, rainbow uh, diagram, because uh, this chart um, illustrates that uh, uh, how we could think about uh, as an individual um, uh, we are influenced by the multiple uh, layers of the built environment um, and uh, uh, the social uh, environment uh, embedded in the physical environment. So this sort of the starting point um, to think about we, how we could conduct a healthy city and a healthy city planning. Um, then, uh, as we all know, the WHO trying to repute the connection between urban planning and public health. Uh, even um, they say that health must be a top priority of urban planners. And then around that time, many um, scholars uh, joined the research and practice in this group. Um, for instance, um, Professor Jason Corbin from Berkeley, and he wrote this book, Toward the Health City. And also, um, Anne Forces, um, Professor Anne Forces from Harvard, uh, also said that uh, actually right now we do have what we call the healthy turn in urban planning. But this is still, I want to call it a healthy city version two, uh, because all those things, um, including WHO, um, Jason, Professor Jason Corbin, and Professor Anne Forces, more focusing on what we call the NCDs, the non-communicable disease. But right now we are facing um, the challenge of infectious disease. So what I would say that we are getting to the, uh, the stage of studying uh, Healthy 30 uh, version three. And before that, I, I also want to share with you the progress in China because uh, just now it's sort of the progress regarding Healthy City around the world. Um, but uh, uh, what we should see that here, uh, we do have uh, evolution uh, in, in China regarding this. Uh, for instance, uh, at the very beginning, uh, what we uh, call uh, it is not a uh, healthy city. Uh, in China, we call it a hygiene city program. And it's quite uh, important for the local governments to meet the standard uh, of this. Um, program and, uh, and but after a certain time around 2000 um, people realized that uh, the hygiene is, is still quite basic. Uh, we should really uh, think about uh, what the city can do for public health uh, at a higher level. So in 2012 
the National Health uh, Commission actually announced this Healthy China 2020. It's a strategic report. And then later on, you can see many other um, policies and uh, initiatives uh, were announced. And uh, um, around uh, 2015, Healthy, Healthy China um, became the national strategy. But around that time, you can also notice um, NCDs, the non-communicable disease, is still you know, the focus. Uh, even when I talk with talk uh, with the officials at the CDC, the uh, the uh, Center for Disease Control, they also also said that now it seems we have the shift from the infectious disease to uh, NCDs. Um, and also, you can see uh, in 2019 we have this Healthy China initiative was announced to. Uh, actually uh, promote certain actions, guidelines, and uh, uh, budget to uh, implement the Healthy China. Um, and this year, um, we can see the, 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 the changing, and uh, uh, even Professor Xi Jinping announced uh, uh, in his talk that uh, we should really promote the integration of health in all policies. This is actually also uh, the, the important policy proposed by WHO. And more importantly, he said that uh, we should implement the concept of full life circle health management. And importantly, we should put this all through the entire process of urban planning, construction, and um, administration. So right now, um, Healthy China and Healthy City uh, became uh, even more important uh, uh, national strategy and the local government um, mission. Uh, that's the, those, I would say that we are getting into the Healthy City version three. And uh, this chart is, um, wh what I wanna show you is, when we think about healthy city planning, right now we should um, think about those two uh, approaches. The first one, um, if you read some literature regarding healthy city planning in the, in the past, you may already know that uh, we, we regard that um, urban space has the function of health promotion through uh, better quality of space than to promote active lifestyle. And then you have more physical activities and you have better social interaction. And in this way, we could lower the incidence of NCDs, um, and then we have better um, health outcomes. But uh, um, you know, during this year, and I think um, after 2020, this year, we 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 need to think about more about the other approach. Uh, you know, it is the infectious disease, and uh, um, I think um, what we should. Um, regarding as a theoretical framework is to believe that urban space also have the function to prevent and intervene the, the happening of um, pandemic. So those three uh, I listed in the box um, is uh, they're actually the three basic components for the um, infectious disease prevention. So first of all, we should isolate the source of infection and cut off the transmission pathways. And then how we could pro protect the vulnerable populations. Actually, actually, those three components, we should uh, uh, pay attention not only during the pandemic, but also before and after. So I think these three provided the, the theoretical framework for urban planners to conduct research and practice to uh, improve um, our capacity of the, um, what we call the, the to pre prevent the infectious disease. This is what I would say the Healthy City version three. And more importantly, we need to think about that the same space, the same park, the same school, campus, and the same neighborhood have to deal with the two challenges, the NCDs and also infectious disease. So sometimes they may have to, you know, um, balance the, the 
the function to those two because sometimes it may be conflict. And uh, um, for, the, for the first approach, the NCDs, um, um, my Health City Lab actually have conducted um, many researches. And uh, I wanna share with you this really important chart. Um, this is the theoretical framework uh, for Health City planning, but more for NCDs. Um, we have the building, uh, bu building, uh, built environment uh, factors like land use, urban form, road and transportation system, green and open space. So all those things are the factors and for planners and the developer, uh, developers and designers to um, arrange to improve the physical and the mental health for the local residents. And there are three uh, pathways for those um, special interventions. The first one is how we could decrease the pollution and uh, especially its human exposure at the micro level. And the second pathway is that how we could increase the physical activity and social interaction. And the third pathway is that how we could provide accessible health facilities. Um, for instance, the allocation of nursing home, uh, hospitals, all those things uh, as public uh, services. And this um, chart actually uh, was adopted by uh, the WHO and the UN Habitat in their um, new announced uh, uh, source book called Integrating Health in Urban and uh, Territorial Planning uh, this year. And based on that, um, our team um, conducted the research to follow those uh, three pathways. I wanna just uh, show you very quickly um, part of it. This is the first one, the first uh, pathway regarding the air pollution. So we use uh, the data of non-cancer incidence of communities in Shanghai and uh, use this, uh, you know, the GIS-based spatial analysis to build a model to identify the significant uh, uh, factors, spatial factors to influence the uh, non-cancer incidence. And uh, we found a quite interesting uh, outcome, uh, such as the mixed use. Um, actually, the mixed use winning one kilometer radio uh, for the residential is actually good for the respiratory health. And also we found that uh, road density is um, not very good for re respiratory health, which actually, um, let us rethink about what we are trying to do uh, right now, the small blocks and the dense roads design, um, which means that we should uh, rethink about uh, the uh, street section if we really want to do this small blocks design. Um, and then the last interesting find is that we need to really think about the green and the open space configure because it has the balance of accessibility and uh, uh, the, the benefit of um, air pollution things. So those, this is the first uh, uh, spatial analysis and for the first pathway, and then we have the uh, second pathway dealing with how we could um, allocate to the, uh, uh, sorry, this should be the third uh, pathway to allocate to the uh, community sports facilities and also community senior um, healthcare facilities. And we use the Gini index and Norin curve to show uh, which um, area has sort of the uh, less uh, health equity. So we should add more facilities in certain area. Uh, this is also a um, statistic um, analysis based using the GIS to uh, find out uh, where is sort of the high, high area that we should uh, pay attention. And then for the uh, physical activity, uh, we use the uh, public park as the uh, research uh, object and study site to find, figure out uh, how we really design uh, the, the, the parks and the micro level to promote the physical activity diversity. This is also, um, you know, um, a statistical analysis. We uh, have this um, uh, 
uh, what we call the on-site observation and uh, to identify the uh, physical activities and then build the model to see what kind of site characteristics and what kind of uh, plants could promote the physical activity. So all those three are just part of the work regarding the first approach of NCDs. And this year, um, you know, because of the uh, COVID-19, so our team started to uh, focusing on the infectious disease. And also as the NCDs, we start with the theoretical framework to understand uh, what, what kind of um, impact of built environment on the infectious disease. So we identified uh, well, based on the literature review and a certain uh, survey and uh, to see that uh, we, the urban planning, um, urban development and urbanization do have the impact on the, uh, the three uh, basic components, the infectious sources, transmission, and the vulnerable population. And uh, um, during this urban development, we can actually also I categorize um, the process into two, the ecological process and also the social process to influence the uh, transmission and also the infectious uh, sources. For instance, um, the land use change will definitely uh, shift to the, um, the population's activity and also the ecological patches and corridors. Um, in, in this way, the frequency and intensity of the integration interaction between the uh, passenger uh, victory and the host will increase. Um, and also um, the uh, built environment uh, definitely will influence the uh, trans uh, transmission of the uh, virus too. And uh, uh, for sure you will, you will know the transportation system um, definitely changed the pattern of the transition in the past and now. Um, those are the uh, basic, um, uh, what we call the elements or aspects we should, we can think about. Uh, urban planning could um, provide strategy at the regional city and the neighborhood level to, to improve those. Um, this actually, uh, we definitely developed a, a, a matrix, but I, I, it's quite a, a complicated today. I just want to show you this uh, theoretical framework and then uh, we can discuss in details uh, later regarding that. And uh, uh, also we conducted some empirical study uh, using the open data, like the, the uh, websites of uh, local governments, um, health communities and the media to track the uh, class of tra uh, transmission of uh, COVID-19 in China uh, this year. And uh, we categorize, um, according to the public health um, discipline, we categorize the cluster transmission into uh, happening in household, social meeting, uh, during shopping or on the transportation uh, uh, facilities, and then uh, hospital and uh, working place. And uh, totally the open source, um, we have uh, totally uh, 1,603 cases. And uh, uh, totally we have uh, 280 cluster transmissions. And you can see uh, the media number for those different uh, uh, categories. And you will realize that uh, where we should pay the most attention to to avoid the, to cut off the, the transition. And then also we conducted research about uh, the uh, alternative care sites and facilities because this is quite important uh, uh, during the pandemic. Uh, pandemic. And also we should uh, think about after that because we need to um, rethink about our design planning for the space to to uh, provide the possibility of combination of um, normal time and during the pan pandemic, what, what kind of space and facilities could promote the, uh, provide the function for, for the different time 
And uh, this is also uh, something we are, we are uh, published regarding that. And then um, we will see that uh, how we could integrate in health into urban planning. Um, we have three approaches right now. The first one is, as you know, in China, we have the National Territorial Spatial Planning System just established. And then we have the very important uh, five, 15 minutes community life circle pro pro um, promoted by the uh, Minister of Natural Resource as also mentioned by Ms. Liu just now. And uh, we have the urban design guidelines. I will go through quickly because I noticed the time is uh, uh, going fast. So this is the structure of the National Territorial Special Planning. So we actually could integrate the health consideration um, into this uh, at different levels where we are doing this right now. Uh, it's trying to um, provide the uh, health risk analysis and the health resource an analysis tool for the National Territorial Spatial Planning. And also we propose the, what we call the public uh, health unit based on this 15 minute community life cycle. Right now, um, the guideline for this 15 minutes community life circle are focusing on the NCDs, the daily health as we know. And then those, this part is what we proposed for the uh, epidemic emergency and what kind of facilities and agencies we should add. And then for the urban design guidelines, uh, if you pay attention, you may notice we already have a lot like in New York, Los Angeles, uh, London, but uh, uh, for, for Shanghai, for uh, like media size, small size cities in China, <clears throat> we may um, develop certain strategies and the standards for them too. Uh, this is also what we are doing right now. Um, then for me, um, healthy city planning and design is how we could um, improve the space to reduce the health risks and meet the health demands. And uh, then we could um, better allocate health elements and resources to achieve health equity. So this is the uh, sort of the definition I would propose for the healthy city planning. And based on that, we also conducted the evidence-based practice. Uh, those are the three um, projects uh, ongoing and at a different uh, uh, spatial scale. The, the first one is at township and the second one is at district level. And the third one is sort of the micro urban regeneration. And this, I just want to show you the, the last one. Um, maybe we can discuss the, the different scales later. And this one is uh, what we call a healthy oriented micro urban regeneration in Kailu New Village. It's, called, it's for the community park and uh, it has been listed as the World Bank uh, Healthy Design Best Practice. Um, this is sort of the location. And this is what you see the bird view and uh, you, you can see uh, in the past before the re uh, regeneration is quite, uh, you know, uh, need to, Im to be improved. And uh, what we are doing is to, um, beside the, 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 the uh, basic analysis we will do for the um, community park design, we also did the wind field simulation and sunlight simulation. And also the, the, the aim to do that um, is not like in the past to just identify um, certain, you know, the, 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 the bad condition or the, to avoid the, the less sunlight, but we regard the wind field as at certain portion and certain reason, a uh, season is the health risk. And uh, we regard the sunlight as health resources. And we um, combine this with the uh, temporal um, space behavior of different groups of the population. And then you have this um, allocation of the different functions for seniors, for the kindergarten, and for the primary school students. And this is sort of the, uh, the basic uh, map. And, uh, we're trying to, to promote interaction and sharing and uh, really design this place uh, to promote health for all ages. And at the same time, we integrate the 
uh, the local users, like we have this um, little planner event to uh, invite the students to do their proposal and uh, uh, to give us an idea how we could revise our, our design. And uh, then uh, after that, we also conducted the, what we call the health impact assessment to identify what we have achieved for the um, health promotion for NCDs. And also we, we consider the, the need for the emergency and the sheltering during the uh, possible pandemic in the future. And uh, so what I would say that it's very important um, in um, healthy city um, planning to, uh, pro to, to promote uh, the integration between the empirical research and the evidence-based practice and also the health impact assessment. Those are the three um, very important components for, for my lab to do. And uh, so at last, I wanna say that uh, for the future healthy city planning, we really need to uh, deal with the challenging how we could uh, promote a special intervention for both uh, non-communicable disease and also infectious disease uh, in the same place. We should consider the health risks and the health resources um, at the same time. And uh, eventually we hope we could um, have better health outcomes and more importantly to, to achieve health equity through our planning. And, uh, and last, I want to say that uh, I, I want to cite, quote the, uh, the, the punchline by, by the WHO and the UN Habitat. It is said that if the purpose of the planning is not for human and uh, uh, plan, planetary uh, health, then what is it for? Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Wang. I will now move on to the Q&A session. So due to limited time, we'll only be selective on that. So I think Ben's question on health planning on villages already answered. So let's move to Hui's question. So during the shutdown period in Wuhan, people suffered from stress and fear and barely had access to public space. So do you think how healthy city planning can actually improve mental health? Well, I think um, what you are talking about is a very uh, unique or special uh, period, right? Uh, that is uh, something we should um, have planned uh, for the future, for sure, because um, during that time, it's sort of all of a sudden, we are, we are facing that. Uh, I think in the future, uh, we, we do need to uh, balance the, the usage of uh, green space um, and the infectious disease, especially during the pandemic. I think right now, uh, some of the cities are trying to do that is um, uh, to uh, have sort of the, what we call the, the time management. So for certain time, a um, certain number of the people could use this space. And uh, um, in this case, to lower the frequency of the interaction. This is also the challenge you, I just mentioned, we need to balance the people who would like to have social uh, interaction and physical activity, but at the same time, uh, we have to think about how to lower the frequency of the very close um, interaction. So for me, I think um, those is what, uh, just the best of what we have right now for the community park. Uh, in the future, I think, Maybe we can think about uh, not only based on the, uh, the what we call the smart city technology to allocate the uh, special uh, sources um, to certain people, a certain number of the people and at a certain um, space, but also maybe we can rethink about the shape of the community um, parks. Uh, in this way, you can have a certain um, area to to play, um, but uh, you can also have the uh, the the comfortable and the security to say that uh, you will not um, be uh, infected by uh, by the disease. What I mean is the shape, or the layout of the community park. Maybe 
rethink about how we could uh, improve in the future. Great, thank you. We'll take one last question from Jason. So we have paid attention to healthiness of city for a very long time, but the serious pandemic problem currently is still threatened to us. What progress we have made during the past hundreds of years? Well, as I just mentioned, um, urban planning uh, back in 1900, uh, we, we actually pro provide the guidance and the regulations to pro uh, guarantee, to ensure the enough sunlight and uh, the vegetation. Uh, and you, you know, uh, the zoning, we have uh, control the FAR, we have to control the distance between cities. All those things provide the basic, you know, health uh, condition for local residents. You may, you may not think that's a progress, but actually back then it definitely is. And then just because of that, we feel like uh, infectious disease may not be so close to the urban residents. That is why uh, even WHO is shifting their focus from uh, infectious disease, sort of infectious disease to the NCDs. Because you can also notice the NCDs, the incidence definitely increased a lot, like uh, diabetes um, and uh, respiratory um, um, health. So what health CCT planning do, uh, did is to, uh, to think about how we could promote physical activities and uh, uh, social ad action. In this sense, we have the, the, a lot of desire to promote uh, walking, bicycling, and uh, we think about the accessibility of community parks, all those things are actually focusing on this. So I think this is a second uh, progress, I would say. This is also what I said, the, the Health City version one and the Health City version two. So right now we are facing the challenge to develop and planning Health City three. I think that's what we are doing right now. Thanks. Thank you. We'll have Shifan to give us a closing remark for the amazing presentations we have today. Thanks um, for all the insightful presentations that really walk us from the connection of space and time, technology, climate mitigation, resilience, and healthy cities. It's really inspiring to see how all these elements are included and integrated for pandemic planning. So um, we'll end today's forum, but the discussion for pandemic planning will remain a heated topic. As young professionals who are passionate about cities, we look forward to hearing more from scholars and practitioners. Um, UCN will continue to facilitate the discussion and keep paying attention to the latest studies. That uh, remarks the end of our forum this year. For those who are in person at CGC Beijing, please enjoy the reception following held by um, Columbia Global Center. And thanks again for attending and we look forward to seeing you all next year in the next forum. Thank you. And thank you again to our amazing guest speakers. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all.